Working on an exhibition at SciArc puts you kind of focally in what I consider one of the most interesting questions in our field, which is the play between art and architecture. Architecture is incredibly important because it is so much a part of how we live and the environment that we find ourselves around. You literally can't escape architecture. And this is also true for artists and those who work in the art world. Artists are potentially exploring the same thing that architecture might want to explore. That rivalry between disciplines plays out very differently at SciArc, where a lot of the students and faculty are as interested in fine art as they are in architecture. Architecture really sort of engages so many different disciplines. Being able to sort of cross over, I think, is one of the reasons why we teach and learn architecture. Architecture is part of the way in which art works are framed. And so you can't see art without the architectural context. It informs how art is presented, as well as the very sort of buildings that you enter into that set up the conditions for viewing. In myself, I've been introduced as an artist sometimes. Although I uh, don't consider myself to operate within the architecture realm currently, to me, architecture has always been maybe the most important art. It is a discipline about building stuff, but it's also about creating stuff, about ideas. And SciArc, I think, allowed me to see that lines can be blurred between these things, between design, between art. We are a creative discipline, similar to the art discipline. So art, for me, is always inside. It's really maybe even a matter of how you approach something, and the end result can be art, can be architecture, but it really kind of depends how much you're willing to flex those definitions. What SciArc is doing in Los Angeles within the art world that's different from other schools is that it is insistently putting architecture into the conversation directly with art. For sure, LA is already a place where you don't want to be in a box. Around when SciArc was founded in the 70s, it was part of a larger conversation within the LA art world in which artists were, in the wake of minimalism and conceptual art, deeply rethinking the material conditions and institutional structures that shape the way in which art is presented and received. Sire makes for the art district. When you do a project in the gallery, you really, you spend a considerable amount of time trying to figure out whether what you were doing operates as art, architecture, or both. The gallery will become the nexus of many other galleries that have now moved in next door and across the street. If you look across the street with Hauser and Wurst, who are our neighbors, see the flow of people, artists coming through, and then ask the students to go and look as a close-up to the work of art. I think that SciArc has continued that in its interest and involvement with artists as well as art critics, as well as institutional relationships between different art schools or different galleries. So we're kind of well situated in, in this neighborhood. Looking at art practices as a kind of different lens to engage with new techniques of making in looking at the way color is used and the way materials are put together. One of the things that I was able to learn at SciArc was, you know, how to imagine any kind of form that I wanted and then be able to build it in the computer and then be able to translate it into a material. 
in contemporary art, you cannot say that technology is always involved. You cannot say that every artist is working with technology. Translating things from a digital world to a physical world and what happens and what disconnect is there, what connections are made that you don't see in the computer. But you can say that now every architect is working with digital technology. Digital tools give us new ways of thinking about architecture and imagining architecture. So my process is similar to architecture in that way where there is some planning involved. You know, everything starts from a sketch or a clay model and then gets translated into the computer and then that gets dissected into different layers that then get milled out on the CNC. If you know how to use these tools, you can sort of imagine how to construct something. Can you filter the analog world of the arts through your digital tools and kind of augment what you see? Giving the students knowledge on how to use a laser cutter or a 3D printer or a CNC mill. And then once off the CNC, it comes in different layers and then those layers get reassembled and then everything from there is actually hands-on. Technique after that of, of hand carving and sometimes chainsaws, sometimes burning, sometimes all, all sorts of things are used to find the final form. Knowledge of how these tools operate would inform new ideas about form making and how to put a building together. I think understanding how these tools work is super important. Some of it is erasure of the digital process, but then some of it also is exposure of the digital process. So it's really this finding these balances between something very handmade and something very not handmade. Really to kind of to create hybrids, look at the analog and the digital, the way that artists look at that, and then find new design methods and design procedures that can be rich. It's incredibly important for artists to think deeply about architecture because of the way in which art can only sort of exist in spaces. And so I think to work hand in hand with some of the most innovative thinkers in architecture, which is where I see Sayar, it will help to push forward new possibilities and, and new spaces for art making. Now there's this aspect of architectural thinking, and I think that's really powerful in a lot of ways for this crossover because it's not putting anyone in a box. It's really saying this is just an approach to doing something, you know, whether it be gaming design or art or movies. And I think what's also exciting about the importance of architecture is that it's a kind of question that's almost impossible to give a complete answer to. The thing that I always loved about Syrac is being the ones that break the rules, being the ones that don't stay within the boundaries, because we need that, I think, more than ever. Syrac is a laboratory for imagination and experimentation. It allows us to envision and perceive our built environment in so many new ways. Whereas I might have thought about architecture in terms of designing buildings before I started teaching at Sayer. I realized that architecture can be this very fluid medium. Sayer also is a form for ideas and ideas that are big and ideas that are small. It's also about designing and organizing ideas, choreographing movements through space. And how you choreograph the effects and the construction of whatever you're doing to find new territory within that spectrum between art and architecture. In my classes, I have had students tell me, wow, I didn't know that art could be like that. The students, I think, open their eyes and realize that nothing is out of bounds. There's an ease to knowing that anything that you can imagine you can potentially make. Anything that you can 
wrap your head around or engage、um, as an idea is potential material for a practice. The first step is awareness. Like, who are the artists? Can we talk to them? And I think that conversation with artists, with architects, with filmmakers, and other creatives is where the future of Sayuri is to become really part of the fabric of the city.